You were about to enter Chuck versus the podcast, the place for people who love Chuck and the people who work on Chuck. The only show that takes you behind the scenes with the stars. Yvonne Strahovski. Zachary Levi. Joshua Gomez. Ryan McPartland. Adam Balba. Sarah Lancaster. Interactive interviews. Julia Wing. Phil Clemmer. All the cast. Dixon High. Tony Hale. Scott Krinsky. Marcus for Lawrence. Anita Figueresi. Fun hosts. This is Mel. This is Liz. Now you can see how wacko we are. The writers. Ali Adler. Scott Rosenbaum. Zev Barrow. The editors. Matt Barber. Jeff Granville. Kevin Mock. Contests. We are giving away a Chuck press kit. The directors. Jason Enzo. Norman Buckley. The guest stars. Steve Austin. Kristen Griff. The music. This is Tim Jones. Guest hosts. I'm Kaylee from Toronto. Conventions. Lights come up and here comes Jester out on stage. Set visits. This is the guy right here. And much more. Are you ready? This is great. This is Mel. This is Liz. And we want to welcome you to Chuck vs. the Podcast, Episode 70, for Friday, October 8th, 2010. We're so excited that this week we've got an interview that Mel had with McKenna Melvin. But first, the news. First, in ratings news, Chuck held steady this week with a 1.9 in that all-important 18 to 49 demo, uh, with 5.37 million people tuning in. And this is pretty much on par with the first two episodes of the season, even though it's getting minimal promotion. And uh, it, also, NBC's other Monday night shows fell for the second week in a row. So Chuck, by comparison, is looking better and better. Mm-hmm. And and we have had some questions over on Twitter. Everybody's talking about uh, what this means. Uh, it's got to be good. Yeah, it's every week. You know, people are getting traffic to their websites by saying, oh, the end is near, the end is near. And, and they've kind of been saying that for the last two seasons. Yeah. <laughs> and here we are in season four. So uh -huh. yeah, I think... Other shows are not performing the way that NBC had hoped, and Chuck is holding steady. So, so far, so good. Mm -hmm. It's all good news. Mm -hmm. And for more good news for our friends across the pond, Chuck's season four premieres August or October 14th on Living. But the first three episodes are already available on UK iTunes. It looks like they've, they're uh, updating the morning after the episode airs in the U.S., so um, then UK people can catch it right away. So we want to thank Gareth for that tip. And on a side note, we know that Chuck season four is not yet available on US iTunes. We don't know why, and we really don't have any control over that. <laughs> <laughs> but we will let you know when it is available. In the meantime, season four is available on Amazon Video On Demand. So catch it over there. Mm -hmm. And for more good news, the Chuck cast has been giving a lot of interviews recently. Uh, two new interviews with Yvonne Strahovski are posted at chucktv.net. And Mel had the chance to chat with McKenna Melvin. We're going to present that to you in just a moment. And she also chatted with Ryan McPartland and Sarah Lancaster. Uh, both of those interviews are posted at chucktv.net, but we're happy to present the audio interview with McKenna Melvin now. Let's roll it. Well, this is Mel with Chuck versus the podcast. And today we have an interview with McKenna Melvin, who plays Alex Coburn, the daughter of John Casey in his uh, former life. So how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks. I'm so excited to get a chance to chat with you. Thank you. Your character has just kind of exploded onto the screen. Nobody expected you. <laughs> <laughs> but Me neither. <laughs> Well, before we get to talking about Chuck, um, tell us a little bit about your background. Um, how did you get into acting? Well, I'm from Northern California, and I'm the daughter of a drama teacher, actually. My mom is a local high school drama teacher, and she also directs plays. So I kind of grew up in her theater, basically. But she never really wanted to be a stage mom. More so, she wanted to make sure it was something that I loved and I really wanted for myself. So she always said, when you're 18, if this is something you still really, really want to do, then, you know, you have our blessing and go pursue it. So I turned 18 and I was like, I'm moving to New York, mom. And uh, she was, her and my father were both 
super supportive, and I moved to New York and studied at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts out there. And then um, when school was over, I had to make the decision whether to stay in New York and try and start a career there and move back to Los Angeles. And I made the decision to come back to L.A., and that's kind of my journey. Wow. So were you active in high school theater then? Yeah, definitely. I was active in high school theater. Before that, before high school, I would do plays off and on, but I was much more of an athlete. My dad is actually a um, – he's a, he's an athlete himself, so I kind of, like, went that road. And then in high school, I switched over, and that's where I really started acting, I think. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite role in high school theater? My favorite role was Scout and To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. So yeah. – that's a juicy one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes I think that'll be like one of the juiciest roles I'll ever get to play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be awesome to play that on Broadway? Oh, my gosh. Yes, and I'm still five feet, so it could work out for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, after you got to L.A., um, I saw on, on IMDb that you did some short films and a couple of guest spots, and then you kind of – your your first big thing is Chuck. Yeah. So how, what drew you to the role of Alex? Well, Alex kind of um, happened in a sense. I didn't even know that it was going to be her name was going to be Alex or that she was going to be the daughter of John Casey. It started out as a one line, one word part. And the really? name was, yeah. And the title of it was 20 year old girl or something. Like <laughs> and the, the line was mom. So I went in and I said mom and they booked me and I was like really I must have said mom really well (laughs) and then um to my surprise too when my manager called me she said not only is did you book the role but now you have a name her name's Alex and she's the daughter and I was like oh my gosh this is amazing it can't this I wasn't expecting this and it's just been so fantastic because the story just continued to grow so when you auditioned you didn't know anything about like um the the backstory or the fact that she knows martial arts and is apparently quite good at it. No, I knew, like I said, all I knew was that she's a 20 year old girl and her line was mom. (laughs) (laughs) And I mean, I had read the scene, so I don't know if you guys remember the first scene that Alex, we see her in where she's running in, her mom's on the couch, but even then they were kind of really uh, tight about what, like who who the mom was. I I didn't I didn't realize who she was. They they weren't giving any of that storyline away. Yeah. The thing, even to us who was auditioning. Well, it was a pretty major reveal. So <laughs> exactly. I, yeah. Yeah. I know they were keeping it pretty close to the vest. Mhm. So when you found out then that in your next scene with John Casey or your next episode you would be kicking him. <laughs> I was you, very excited. Yeah. Do, do you have a background in martial arts? I do have a background in martial arts. Um, when I was about 11, I would say, I was begging and begging and begging, and finally my parents were like, okay, you can do karate, because to them it seemed like this really foreign concept. They didn't understand why I would choose that sport. Um, and so, yeah, I, I started martial arts when I was about 11, and when I was 16, I got my black belt. I missed my junior prom to test for my black belt. Wow. And, yeah, I, w- I was really, really, like, at that point in my life, the theater – Martial arts and dance were like what I was focused on. I was wow. kind of a big nerd and didn't really have a social life in high school. But, um, but yeah. So, so when I found out that there was going to be this element to the character, I was so excited. And I remember getting to work and seeing that they had a stunt double for me, and kind of like being thinking to myself, how can I make this so that she doesn't work today, <laughs> <You know? laughs> that I get to do it? And uh, and everybody was really excited, and she was really excited to teach me the conversation, and and they were open to letting me try, and it worked out, and I got to do it, and it was really fun. Oh, neat! Mm-hmm. So was was it a surprise for them then that you had the ability? You know, I'm not sure. I know that. On my resume and things like that, it says that I'm a first-degree black belt in Taekwondo, but I'm not sure if the show completely knew that or not. Yeah. But now they do, so yeah. hopefully, hopefully they will uh, go write some more fun stuff for her. Have you had a chance to use it again? I have not no. um, yet, but maybe soon. Fingers crossed, right? Fingers crossed, yeah. yeah. How many episodes do we get to see Alex in this season? The exact number is still is up in the air, but um, as of now, I can say three for sure. 
Right on. So yeah. talk, talk to us about playing Adam Baldwin's on-screen daughter. Um, you know, how does Alex feel about her father coming into her life? Because she thought he was dead, didn't she? Exactly. She did think he was dead. I think my personal take on it is in this season we'll kind of, we'll see. She's really excited to embrace her father and really excited to cultivate this new relationship with him. He, as we saw in the last episode, is a little maybe hesitant and nervous as to what what and where he can play a role in her life. Um, but I think from Alex's side, she's just really excited to to have this father figure. And personally, for me, I'm so close. Me, McKenna, is really close to my father. So I think for somebody who grew up without having a father and never knew her father existed to finally have this opportunity would be such a wonderful thing. I would imagine so. Yeah. And- to, but is there a conflict between the two of them? I mean, is there any kind of feeling of where have you been for the last 20 years? You know, that is still kind of, I think so. In terms of what we see on screen, it hasn't necessarily played out exactly yet. But I think I wouldn't be surprised if some of those elements kind of are brought in. Yeah. Some- is it still kind of, uh, well, for lack of a better word, the honeymoon phase between the two of them? Yeah. 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 Before too long, he'll get a feel for what it's like to have a a 20 year old daughter. (laughs) I guess so. I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll find out. Yeah. Well, we've heard some rumors about a forbidden romance for Morgan and fans are pretty sure we know what that's all about. So tell us what's up with Alex and Morgan this season. Well, let's just say we have a really fun dynamic. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. You guys will find all, all about it. So. But yeah. right now, we're, it's a really fun dynamic, and I have definitely, Morgan and Alex have some sort of a relationship, and it's fun. Yeah. So. It's about time. <laughs> well, you know, it's about time the little bearded man got somebody to keep him on his little toes. little bearded man is so cute, though. Oh, he is. He's adorable. Yes. You got to love Gomez. Oh, yeah, exactly. And he, as an, a person, an actor, is just a joy to work with as everyone is on set. Yeah. I have who, a lot of stuff. Who have you worked with the most? Um, this season, I probably definitely Josh and Adam for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, that's going to be a fun triangle to watch the three of you guys. Cause they've, um, were you a fan of Chuck before? I was a fan of Chuck. Um, but obviously once I got on the show, I became even more. So yes. <laughs> Jack, you know? Of course, of course. I, I think I entered, I'd seen one or two episodes the first season, mm-hmm. um, and then I kind of picked up mid-season, but now I've gone back and I've like DVR'd, or not DVR'd, Netflixed all the seasons, and I'm like totally stoked on it. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, the, the dynamic between Casey and Morgan has really grown, especially in the last, uh, in season three. So adding Alex into the mix has a lot of fans really excited to see what that can do for Morgan and Casey. Exactly. Yeah. You guys, it's, it's fun. It's a fun dynamic for them. Yeah. Is Alex yeah. going to be part of the spy world that she knows of? She, I do not know. Um, I hope so. Yeah. I think it would be really fun as an actress and I think it would be fun for a character as well. Um, but I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about Alex's backstory. Is there an official one, or have you made one up? Well, there isn't. I mean, other than what we kind of know, there's not a super official backstory about about Alex. Um, I mean, we do know that she has a mother, and she was raised by her mom. Mm-hmm. So, and um, I mean, I have kind of created my own little thing I've decided for me, I don't know if this, if this is when the story creators are going, that, you know, she was raised with a single mom. There wasn't necessarily another man involved. And so, which makes it even more, like we kind of talked about before, when she does have this father figure that I'm sure she's been craving and desiring her entire life when he comes in. It's got to be jarring, which we saw in mm-hmm. the first, uh, like last season. She was a little, you know, I mean, imagine for anyone to to find out your father is actually alive and he was dead and this whole thing has got to be a little traumatic. Yes, (laughs) yes. Needless to say. But I think, uh, yeah, I think she's just really excited to to meet him. Mm -hmm. And she works as a waitress. Yes, she does. Does she she still have that job? 
um, as a waitress? I think she does. Yes. Okay. She does. Yeah. And what is she majoring in at school? She is majoring in criminal psychology. Which is just perfect. Exactly. Yeah. I, it's like completely perfect for yeah. this school. Yeah. <laughs> did she, uh, did she get to apply any of those skills to this new dynamic or is she still pretty much in the dark about what's going on? She's still pretty much in the dark okay. from my understanding about what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're eagerly, eagerly awaiting when she uh, figures it out because, you know, <laughs> if she's Casey's daughter, she's, yeah, she's, she's his daughter. And I mean, who's more of a, a, a spy than Casey? He right. is the ultimate, you know? <laughs> Exactly. So, you know, his daughter's got to have some sort of innate suspicion. I think maybe yeah. she does. That, that'll be my little secret. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, talk to us about um, what else you're working on. Do you have any other projects coming up? Um, yeah, actually, I just shot an episode of Detroit 187. Oh. Which is the new little cop show. I don't know if any of, any of you guys have seen it. Um and it was really fun. I got to fly up for Det to Detroit for a week, and uh, it was just kind of a one-episode guest star, but it was a lot of fun. The casting crew of that show are amazing, have nothing but wonderful things to say about them and the experience as a whole. So I'm really excited. I think it's episode six. Okay. Yeah. And that's on ABC, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. You know, in this day and age where you can just set the DVR to record? Oh, yeah. I love kind it. Of Forget, I know, but I forget what network things are on. Exactly. Or what time they're on sometimes, yeah. too. You're like, I usually watch that on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> you mean everybody doesn't do that? Nobody else does that. I watch everything in one big row, too. Yeah. yeah. When you get the chance. Except for Chuck. We watch that live. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Of oh, I know you're on Twitter. Do you um, watch along with the other fans on Twitter and and see what they're saying? Yeah, of course. I love – Twitter's been – a really fun new thing for me and the chuck fans are amazing they're such loyal enthusiastic excited fans um it, it's it's really great and especially on twitter it's, i love to be able to interact with them and and uh and hear what they have to say and and it's just great it's so much fun it is it's and we've been able to really harness it that's one thing that we used to um, help renew for season three and again for season four. So, exactly. yeah, it's kind of become a Chuck fan playground. <laughs> yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know you've got to get to the airport, so I don't want to take too much of your time. <laughs> no, but, but it was fun. It is fun. It's so lovely to talk to you. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you. And have a safe trip back. And we look forward to seeing you on screen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And we're back. And uh, boy, <laughs> must have been great to talk to her. I, I, I actually haven't heard a lot of interviews with her um, lately. So so good scoop. Yeah, she's just kind of getting back into the press rounds. And she was just a delight to talk to. Such a sweetheart. She was getting ready to board a plane. And she's like, no, no, I've got plenty of time. got plenty of time. So um, it was really nice of her to take the time to chat with us and answer some of her questions, at least things that she could answer. You may have noticed that she is already pretty good at avoiding spoilers. So we didn't get a lot of big scoop out of her, but some good stories. Mm -hmm. And before we get to our episode discussion, I do have one unfortunate news item, and that's that since the recording of this podcast, uh, I've sustained a wrist injury. And one thing that that has caused is that this podcast was slightly delayed, and I do apologize for that. But also uh, for at least the next two weeks, there will not be another podcast as my wrist heals. And so I encourage you to go to chucktv.net for all of the latest news. Follow us on Twitter, at Gray Jones, and at chucktv.net for the latest Chuck news. And I do apologize about that, and we'll hopefully see you sometime in early November. Thanks a lot. And now on to the episode discussion. And so now I'm super excited that we can talk about uh, what has become one of my favorite episodes of the whole series, um, Chuck versus the Cubic Z, which was written by Nicholas Wooten, a new writer uh, this season, and also directed by our old friend Norman Buckley. What did you guys think of the episode? 
I'm not going to say it's my favorite, but I thought it was pretty good. It was a lot of fun. Um, of course, the um, the chick fights were, also, were always, you know, it's always good to see um, Yvonne perform like that. And um, Nicole Richie just surprises me mm-hmm. every time I see her because I, I don't know, you know, I'm just... We'll chalk it up to me not seeing a whole lot of stuff that she's done because I just really don't have anything to compare it with. But um, I like what I see when she's on Chuck. She's a lot of fun. She holds my interest. And uh, I liked her character a lot more in this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It felt like we got to know more about her as she was picking at Chuck and Sarah. As she was revealing more of herself in the process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and- I like that Chuck was standing up to her. He kind of took his cue from Sarah. You know, Sarah was over it and she said so. And so Chuck felt free to be over it as well. Yeah. You know, not, I mean, it was obviously getting under Sarah's skin, what she was saying, but I I really liked the the way the two of them tried to handle that character. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought it, it, um, it, it gave some new layers to their relationship which I, I really liked. And, and actually, I mean, some of the things I liked in general about this episode, number one, it was a bottle episode. Um, in other words, everything took place on the standing sets, uh, and in particular, almost everything in the Buy More. And uh, when you do that, it, it allows you to focus on the characters. And um, by first, uh, you've got the big mic entrance, which I thought was really, really well handled, um, mm-hmm. coming in with the the... Uh, engagement to Morgan's mom and then dealing with these same issues in, in Chuck and Sarah's relationship. Um, I thought it was a nice contrast. Um, and uh, I I do admit I, I get t- a little tired sometimes with the, the, the repetition of um, the same kind of thing with, Ch- with Chuck kind of um, on a little bit of a neurosis of some kind and and continuing on that with this one i i was very happy to see them actually get get somewhere on this issue yeah and that was because sarah said we need to talk Mm -hmm. and chuck heard her and made a point to make time for them to talk that Mm -hmm. was major progress for the two of them and then and just in i mean for for sarah it was it was nice to have her um, with this childhood nemesis, um, bringing out at first bringing out the ugliness, but then forcing her to to um, accept something that maybe has been brewing for a while. Yeah, mm-hmm. she kind of picked away at something that, and I think she probably, yeah, I think you're right. Probably brought it to the surface a little more because she just kept picking and picking, and uh, um, finally got what she wanted or what she was aiming for, which was to, I don't know, get her eyes out of Sarah, mm-hmm. get her to admit something. Yeah. Jenny, Sarah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that was a, a clever little way to remind Sarah that um, Heather knew her when she was Jenny, mm-hmm. but she was accepting her as Sarah. But So do you mean um, that she was finally, she was picking and picking it, Sarah saying that you're just like me, you're just like me, until Sarah said, "No, I'm not." Yeah, and then followed it, followed it up with an action. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, and and um, and it was real. I thought real progress for for Sarah's character. Um, yeah, yeah, one of the things we talked about with with Mo Ryan was um was how Sarah's character was not maybe having as much of an arc uh, in season three as as Chuck's was. And I think it's really encouraging to see her character taking some big strides this season. That's a good point. We have seen a fair amount of character growth for Sarah, especially since episode 13 of last season. Mm -hmm. And considering, I mean, we're only in the third episode here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's true. I hadn't really thought about that. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, I love the sparring sequence with Adam Baldwin and uh, Yvonne near the beginning where she's just... (laughs) <laughs> kicking his butt. And I was just about to bring that up that, and that he picked up on the fact that something was different yeah. about the sparring session and he said, what's bugging you? And they had this conversation again showing that they are real partners. Mm-hmm. They've grown to 
respect each other and they're fond of each other and they're, they're friends. They've become friends in the last three, four years. And it's nice to see that. I always like it when we see a genuine Casey and Sarah scene that shows us that they are partners, that yes, Sarah is in love with Chuck and she is his partner in another sense. But Casey and Sarah are spies and they're partners and they trust each other and they've got each other's back. And, and that's, we've seen that a few times already this season. And I really appreciate seeing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Hugo Panzer, um, I thought was, uh, very well drawn this episode. Um, in the, in the first episode, first time he appeared, he didn't have that much to do. I mean, just being in the plane, but it was, it was nice to see sort of his creative exit from the, the cell, him hacking into the computer. And, and I, I imagine it would have been really fun for him to play um, yeah. that part. And then to counter that, we have Casey trying to get in, you know, uh, get into the computer system and thwart him. He's having this <laughs> oh, conversation yeah. with the computer. That was hilarious. That was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to see a lot more action out of um, Steve Austin. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I just think it's fun to watch him in action. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they had the cage match and... and uh... The cage match was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I totally loved it. It it um I and I liked that Chuck was flashing and it helped, but only a little bit, proving, you know, brains over brawn does not always happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He may have the know how, but he doesn't have the physique and he could never yeah. he would never be able to win against someone built like like um Panzer. <laughs> yeah. At at least not with it without the aid of some well-placed computer components. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and also he, I mean, we, we still have that issue that, that his emotions come in the way and that's mm -hmm. good. I mean, it shows that he's not this cold super spy yet and he's got a ways to grow and, and that's, that's fine. I mean, that's, he's still our Chuck. Indeed. Yeah. I was kind of hoping for a fight in the air duct though, when it fell and you uh -huh. had that kind of, comical visual yeah. of them both, you know, coming out the end. And I thought, Oh my gosh, are they, are they going to have a fight in the air duct? Uh -huh. <laughs> they didn't. I, they, well, it kind of did a little bit when, when Hugo was hanging and, uh, and, yeah. and Chuck was just <laughs> right, <laughs> like he, right. he flashed and all the flash let him do was just punch him. <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah. They, they did have a little bit of that. And I guess, you know, that had kind of already been answered, but when they fell, I was like, Whoa, are they, you know, they now are both, on solid ground uh, i don't know the fight i was picturing in my head would have been really funny but i think logistically impossible so mm -hmm. even though the show you know stretches the bounds of credibility at times i think that would have put it that would have been a jump the shark kind of fight mm -hmm. now i mean to their credit uh they used those ducks really well in this episode <laughs> like it, it was it was a fun episode with the like hugo panzer uh, peering up and, and hearing them in the ducks and mm -hmm. and uh I mean, like for the amount of time they spent in the ducts, it w it was really fun. Boy, those are some clean air ducts too. Yeah, that's CIA. They keep their stuff clean. Well, it's brand new. <laughs> I mean, just rebuilt. That's true. It didn't. Yeah, it hasn't had much time to get dirty. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the CIA, where were they during the riot? Yeah. Well, I I do get the the impression that their presence has been scaled back. Yeah, and I guess they were hoping that Greta would be enough. To keep everyone in line, Stacy Keebler guest starring as Greta in this episode, um, and they weren't really counting on the fact that uh, Hugo Panzer was going to take her down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, and and it does bring up an interesting point. Like we know a lot has ended up on the cutting room floor with these mm -hmm. Greta um, people. Um, I thought Stacy Keebler was obviously better than, uh, I mean, as as edited, um, better than Olivia Munn. Olivia mm -hmm. Munn ended up. Uh, almost totally cut. Um, but so, somebody did bring up the fact that, that the fun Greta parts have been only Isaiah Mustafa, that mm -hmm. the women have been more eye candy. And it'd be nice to see a uh, female Greta that, that actually had more to do. Well, maybe we will, you know, we, we know who's coming up in episode eight. So mm -hmm. I hope that yeah. she gets oh. more screen time. <laughs> I, I cannot I wait. Hope so <laughs> such potential, yeah, such potential. You know, it would be cool if that's what's happening with the Greta characters. Mm -hmm. 
you know, with each, each episode they get, you know, they get, they have more to do or I don't know, you know what, more screen time. Mm-hmm. Become more integrated. They, see, that's what they did with Isaiah Mustafa's Greta was so well integrated into the story. And these, and they really had a chance with Stacey Keebler's Greta. They could have not had hands or knock her out mm. in seconds, but um, you know, she just, if she'd been around at the buy more during the riot, that could have been really interesting. It could have given her a little more screen time and been a little more fun, but it wouldn't have given big Mike the opportunity to tase Panzer. So, yeah, well, they, yeah. I mean, I do get the fact that they've got a lot of characters to service, mm-hmm. um, in an episode, uh, particularly with big Mike back now. Um, they had two major guest stars, um, mm-hmm. already with Hugo Panzer and, uh, uh, the Nicole Richie character. Mm-hmm. So it's just a lot going on. There is, yeah. Yeah, uh, in that interview that with um, Ryan McPartland and Sarah Lancaster, there was a question about, you know, do you try to get as much screen time as possible for your characters? And they both were saying, you know, we just go with what the writers give us and we're really happy about that. But they're shooting three different shows in one. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're they were they were just talking about that they sit down on Mondays with us to watch the show and see the other two parts of the show that they weren't a part of mm-hmm. most episodes. And it's true. I mean, there are three different shows being filmed yeah. in one. So that's a lot to do. Yeah, and, and unless Ellie's coming into the buy more to go shopping, um, she won't even re- interact with the, the rest of the characters. Right. For the most part, she's at home. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the the buy more stuff. Um, I I think it served its purpose. I I think really it um, it it was there to service the Big Mike and Morgan story, mm-hmm. um, and I I think it accomplished that purpose. And I I didn't have any problem with it, but it wasn't necessarily as uh, as brilliantly comic or exciting as like. Oh, the Isaiah Mustafa bits last time were just yeah. hilarious. Yeah, it wasn't quite as compelling. And I wonder if that maybe has something to do with Nicholas Wooten's background and that he's more of a dramatic writer um, and more of a procedural cop drama writer. And so maybe he wasn't really sure what to do with the Buy More staff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, the actors who have been playing these roles for four years now were able to do what they needed to do, but you can only do so much without within the confines of the story. Yeah. So I was a little disappointed with the buy more part of things. Um, you know, that would have been a perfect opportunity for Jeff and Lester to put on an impromptu little concert instead of the poetry slam. Yeah. Yeah. There there could have been a better punchline there. Like, um, like the last bottle episode we saw the beard, um, (laughs) just, was tremendous what they what they did in the buy more um so maybe maybe a missed opportunity but it, at the same time it, it was a very full episode already mm-hmm. so. i think well, i would have been made... disappointed with another jeffster um rock out scene in this episode. It's something that they had done before yeah it's too soon yeah i just think I it's know. too soon you know how i feel about poetry so that was maybe my own bias I'll, I'll I'll tell you what I was looking for, and and um, one of the things in in writing is is um, you often have the setup and payoff, and when something is set up, you want it to pay off, and it seemed like they it was being set up that part of the fight was going to take place in the buy more, and that all of the people gathered would think that it was the presentation um, for the video game. Oh, yeah. Like that, I... that would, that would have been a great opportunity. Like imagine, imagine Hugo Panzer duking it out with, with, uh, with Chuck and everybody cheering because they think it's this video game presentation. Mm-hmm. That would have been sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And said it was all going on behind the scenes and then Big Mike thinks, you know, mistakes him for a nerd somehow. Mm-hmm. He's been waiting for the game. Yeah. Which was funny. I mean, that was, it was a, amusing punchline and you know big mike to the rescue again but i think i like your version better <laughs> I do too. that would have been great yeah now we also had the fight on the rooftop with sarah 
giving Heather a gun mm -hmm. and trusting her. Um, that was a pivotal moment, I think, for both of their characters. Yeah. I almost expected her to let her go. So did I. But that would have been a little too much of a character turnaround for, for Sarah. It would have been too out of character, I think. Yeah. Because she is still a spy and she is still bound to do her duty. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Heather deserves to be let go. No. Either. <laughs> <laughs> now I was really interested that they connected both Heather and Hugo to Volkov. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just going to be Heather because we had seen in the previews we'd seen Chuck flash on her, yeah, and that she was connected to Frost, who of course is Mama Barkowski. I did not see the Hugo connection coming though. Yeah, and that somehow she was supposed to be was she supposed to be being transferred with Hugo so he could off her because that's, she that's, had... that's what I was understanding okay that's what i thought too and that's why she was so worried is that he was coming that he was going to come kill her mm -hmm. and that he wasn't necessarily after chuck and sarah although you know he did have a grudge against chuck mm -hmm. since he kind of kicked his butt in <laughs> <playing. laughs> yeah. and interesting yeah. that he, he used the, the same method of of dropping a shelf on him <laughs> yes hey if it works once yeah it ain't broke yeah <laughs> Now, what did you think about that last scene with Chuck and Sarah? You know, I saw it coming um, from a couple of weeks away, mm -hmm. but I am impressed that I'm impressed with the way Norman Buckley and the editor, I, I didn't catch who edited this one. I think it was, was Kevin it Matt? Mock. Was it Kevin Mock? Okay. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Kevin Mock for editing a, a brilliant sequence there at the end. It could have been really trite and cliche. But the just the way it all came together, I appreciated that it was something unique, mm -hmm. as, as much as it could be. I thought it was fun watching the the rings, you know, journey down the the um, the duct there as yeah. this conversation was going on. <laughs> yeah, and and boy, when uh, when he gets down on his knee to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was like a, a choreographed dance, you know, yes. with <laughs> uh, the the ring over here and Sarah and Chuck over there, and all leading up to them coming together. It was so weird. I know it sounds sappy for me to say it, but uh -huh. when you're watching it, it, I thought it was fun. I thought it was unique. Yeah, it it, it was very fun, and and you didn't know exactly where it was going. Like I I, I thought it at one point that that he. Like she was actually going to think he was proposing and say yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So did I. And I think a lot of other fans did too. And there's some confusion still, even though it was given away in the preview for next week. But it, I really liked the way that they changed. They didn't go with the expected response and have it be some oh hilarious sitcom con, uh, confusion. Mm -hmm. Instead, it was sort of like it dawning on the both of them. Huh. Maybe maybe this is what we want. Maybe yeah. not yet, but maybe this is in our future. Maybe this isn't so beyond the realm of possibility. So I liked that we had that kind of subtle, maybe a little too subtle realization for both of them that, you know, as Sarah said, I'm in this for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's in that long haul could involve a ring at one point. So. Yeah. It's kismet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I, I don't know if, if this should be in the spoiler section or not. This is what I almost said last week and then stopped myself or a couple of weeks ago uh, that on set when I was there and they were filming episode seven, she was not wearing a ring. So it's not an engagement, folks. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody expects that that's that like if, if that's what happened, they would have shown it. Mm -hmm. um, it. It was more that just dawning on them that they're they're open to the possibility yeah because anything else is just too soon yeah. yeah yeah and i don't think that the fans at least i wouldn't be satisfied if that was the way they got engaged yeah i want chuck to put a lot of thought into it and sarah to be uh either completely unaware and delighted or to know what he's up to and still delighted because he's putting this much effort into it mm -hmm. you know i want something i want there to be a lot of thought behind it i don't want it to be an Oh, hey, here's a ring that just dropped out of the air duct. Let's get married. <laughs> That's yeah. not the check Sarah that I know. Yeah. That's not the relationship that I'm rooting for. Yeah. So, I, uh, all in all, 
I think good solid episode. I I'm glad to see Big Mike is back. Um, they they used those guest stars really well. Um, we got to see a little bit more from uh, from Greta than the first female Greta. Uh, hopefully, we'll see more in the uh, in the coming weeks. Um, Casey injured. That's one thing we didn't talk about. Yeah, so he's out of commission, which I guess gives him some time to catch up with Alex. I like that Sarah was saying, "Hey, go see your daughter." Mm-hmm. Yeah, take a paid vacation. Yeah. We also found out Morgan's mother's full name: <laughs> Bo- Bologna Garcia Bugumvia. Yeah. <laughs> Bugumvia. Uh, you know, I can't even remember all those names. Yeah. I, well, I tweeted it, so that's how. Or no, we were in the live chat. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't remember either. But. I mean, whatever her. happened to just Mary or Sue? <laughs> Please. Comic opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I guess um, that's about it for the episode. Uh, so great job to Norm Buckley, Nick Wooten, and Kevin Mock. And uh, so if you want more about that, there's always the He Said, She Said on ChuckTV.net with uh, Lou and Josie. Um, so check those out and also, uh, Lou's new podcast, the CNN, uh, nerd tastic or nerd posium. The, the Czech nerd posium network, I think is what he's calling it. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, when he emailed me to ask if it was okay to start talking about the reviews for the CNN reviews, I'm not even going to admit how many, how long I was over at CNN.com trying to figure out what he was talking about. <laughs> Before I realized, oh, uh aha, that's what that means. uh, Yeah, so there's lots lots of places that you can listen uh, to people or read people's thoughts on the episode. And there's lots of places like the forum at ChuckTV.net where you can talk about it. And now we want to thank our sponsors for giving us the opportunity to talk about Chuck with you every week ielabs.com are the makers of award-winning Action Blue ADC HD conversion software, which authors full HD videos on regular DVD discs. It even works with HD clips from the newest iPhone 4. You can get your free trial at ielabs.com. We also want to thank moviemorons.com. It's a podcast about film. We encourage you to go check that out and find out which movies you should be watching this fall and which you should avoid. They also have all the latest movie news. And of course, SyrianJunkies.de. We want to thank them for sponsoring us as well. Hello, this is Christina Caramel from Serien Junkies TV. Are you addicted to TV shows? Be our guests and learn the latest news and reflections on what's going on in the world of TV series. Well, our show is in German, but maybe you want to drop in anyway? Then visit www.SyrianJunkies.de and watch out for our video podcast. See you. Mm-hmm. And as we start to close out, I want to remind you that there's another place you can you can go if you like TV shows. That's the TV Writer Podcast that I do. This uh, uh, this week's episode, I mentioned, I think, already that I was going to interview Rob Kuttner, and I finally did. He's a five-time Emmy Award-winning writer. Five times. Um, and uh, had a great interview with him talking about his work on shows like Conan O'Brien and The Daily Show with Jon Stewart and Dennis Miller Live. Um, And also the TV Writer Twitter database is also on the same site. Uh, There are hundreds of writers that you can follow, all grouped by your favorite shows. So if you're on Twitter, um, definitely go to the TV Writer Twitter database at tvwriterpodcast.com. And you can follow us on Twitter um, at chucktv.net and at Gray Jones, and um, we never mentioned Liz's Twitter, but hey, Liz, do you want to go ahead? My Twitter? Yeah. She's never what do you mean? My Twitter handle? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are going to laugh. It's so unoriginal. Okay, it's at Pearls of Lisdom. Pearls of Lisdom. So yes. uh, we always mention ChuckTV.net and Gray Jones, while well, now you also have Liz's as well. <laughs> for what it's worth she yeah. tweets like once a month no i'm on there more because more people are following me uh-huh. <laughs> now and it's getting fun thanks to gray <laughs> and they will now <laughs> well remember if you have any questions or comments or you want to share your you know twitter handle with us uh, you can email us at mail at chuckpodcast.com 
And be sure to join us on ChuckTV.net on Monday, October 11th at 8, 7 Central for the live chat during the new episode of Chuck. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to roll into spoilers in a second. If you don't want to hear the spoilers, you know the drill. So talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye, Texters. Bye-bye. And we're back. Mel, what have you got for us? Well, our first spoiler is the official synopsis for episode 405, which also has a title correction. Originally, we were told, I think Gaziallo said it was Chuck versus the couch look, but it's actually Chuck versus the couch lock, hmm. which has changed a lot of speculation about this episode. Yeah, I guess so. One little... The official synopsis reads, Chuck's latest mission provides a link to Casey's past and possibly to Chuck's mom. Eric Roberts, Joel David Moore, David Batista, and McKenna Melvin guest star. When Colonel Casey's former team returns looking for him, Chuck must decide what he's willing to sacrifice in order to find his mom. Elsewhere, Morgan works up the nerve to reveal a potentially dangerous secret to Casey. <laughs> we know what that is. Yeah, we do. Yvonne Strahovski, Sarah Lancaster, Ryan McPartland, Benita Friederici, Vic Sahai, and Scott Krinsky also star. So this is going to be pretty much the entire original cast back in action mm -hmm. plus our several guest stars. So yeah. that should be a lot of fun. And that is episode four Oh five, which airs um, October 18th. Yeah. And, and boy, those, those guys remind me of the a team. I wonder if yeah. there's going to be any a team jokes. Oh, there has to be, you yeah. know, they're going to have a black van. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Well, here's not a huge scoop, but Aziello gives us a little tidbit about some travel plans for Team Bartowski via a question from Jenny. She says, Olivia Munn was awesome on Chuck last week, or it was actually the first episode. Any chance that she's going to be a series regular? And Aziello's replies, I hear they wanted her to stick around, but she has a full plate, what with The Daily Show and NBC's Perfect Couples. But maybe this will cheer you up. An upcoming Chuck, or or an up Chuck, if you will, please. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll we'll bump. Be, I know. We'll be set in Thailand. Not the real Thailand, of course. Uh, this, the uh, sliver of the Warner Brothers back lot was made to look like Thailand. Mm hmm. Now, I have to wonder why he felt the need to clarify that it was a sliver of the back lot and not an actual location shoot. Is that a clue or I'm, I mean, why, I'm, is, why is that important? I'm just guessing that they he gets a lot of the same emails that we get, uh, well, like everybody saying, why can't you shoot in this country? Why can't you shoot in that country? Maybe. Maybe he was just trying to stave off some emails. Mm hmm. Or make up for that up chuck. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, Ozzy Elok, he can do better than that. Yeah. And episode six of season four, Chuck versus the Isle of Terror. <laughs> Chuck's dream <laughs> of finding his mom may be his worst nightmare. Linda Hamilton, Morgan Fairchild, and Robert Englund guest star. When Chuck, Sarah, Casey, and Morgan are tasked to stop Dr. Stanley Wheelwright, who is played by Robert Englund, Nightmare on Elm Street films, and of course the original V as Willie, from releasing a nightmare-inducing toxin, they're also led to question the allegiances of Chuck's mom. Meanwhile, Jeff and Lester use their unique sensibilities to celebrate Halloween at the Bymore, and Ellie and Awesome get a visit from Dr. Honey Woodcomb. Benita Friderici and Mark Christopher Lawrence also star. So it sounds like a fun Halloween episode. I'm a little concerned about Jeff and Lester using their unique set of skills on yeah. anything <laughs> yeah. for any reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned about Robert Englund being on here. Is he going to pull out those... those nails or those ugh, oh. uh, paws. Maybe I, I hope he's more like Willie yeah. than <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that V is coming up soon can't wait for that yes it is yep uh, so that's all we've got for this week um, we will see you next time hope you enjoyed the episode and uh, watch for us next Monday make sure you watch Chuck live we'll see you then take care bye bye